Hi, and welcome back to the Silage Zone. I'm excited today to share with you some of the things that we have in our toolkit to manage fiber digestibility in the two major crops that we deal with on dairies, alfalfa and corn. The five areas that I'm going to cover briefly are genetics, fertility, planter performance, monitoring and managing pests and diseases, and then harvest management. So let's start with genetics. When we look at corn, what do we have? The two major choices we have on fiber digestibility are brown midrib hybrids and standard hybrids, non-BMRs. There's going to be a fiber digestibility difference that you can choose from and even within the standard hybrids there's a bit of a range from low to high that you can also select from based on the criteria that we've accumulated with our research. Alfalfa, if we go to genetics there, our standard muscle variety, you can have excellent fiber digestibility. But on a same day cutting scenario, if you had selected one of our quality varieties with a Q in the name, your fiber digestibility and relative feed quality is going to be higher on that same day cutting versus a straight muscle variety. And if you want to take it another step over the quality varieties, you could select a Harv Extra, which is not just a lowered lignin, but a reduced lignin. Harv Extra is going to have a higher relative feed quality on the same day cutting, more so than the quality variety or the muscle variety. So that's genetics on the two primary crops. Next is fertility. A blanket statement would be, we know what it takes to grow a crop in the way of NPK, sulfur, all the micronutrients, pH, and we just need to make sure that through very good soil sampling, through a recognition of what we're removing in the way of the crop, so that we have the nutrients in the soil ready in the correct pH so that that plant, when we get a rain, can take up what's needed to continue its growth and be the most productive that it can be. Okay, third thing, planter performance. Really critical. We look at corn. We want a planter that is evenly spacing those plants, planting them at the same depth no matter what they're encountering in the field to give them the best opportunity to emerge within each other time-wise at almost the identical time. Then we don't have one plant out competing another and turning this one into a weed that is gonna have poor fiber digestibility. Alfalfa, planter performance, main thing there is we wanna make sure that there's great seed to soil contact when we plant that so that we have a really thick stand that's crowding out any weeds so that we have a pure stand of what we're trying to harvest. The fourth thing that I want to cover is monitoring and managing pests and diseases. So with corn, right now, this time of year, we're at about V7, V8. We want to be looking to see, are we losing any ability to take up nutrients because of corn rootworm feeding? So root digs and doing float tests or are we losing anything in the way of something starting in the lower canopy from a disease standpoint? Whether it's gray leaf spot, northern corn leaf blight, tar spot, maybe even southern rust. On the alfalfa, what we're looking for in the way of diseases is looking at those lower leaves, especially on the extended cut window, and making sure that we're not losing those lower leaves. Because again, the leaves our 400 relative feed quality. A good healthy alfalfa leaf is 400 relative feed quality, always. So we can't afford to lose them or our relative feed quality overall is gonna go down. We also look to see if we're having trouble with pests in alfalfa. We had a tremendous onslaught of alfalfa weevils this year. Uh, we're gonna be looking hard for potato leaf hoppers because all they're doing is stealing the most nutritious part of the plant from us all the time. For corn, again, corn rootworm underneath, the leaf diseases in the lower canopy, making sure that we're ahead of that. And later on, if we start to see adult corn rootwort beetles or other insects that may be clipping the silks and limiting our pollination and turning that plant into less than what it could be, Again, we need to monitor it and manage it as needed. Last thing I'm going to talk about is harvest management. So corn silage, to 
to improve our fiber digestibility, we know of some things that can help right off the bat. So high chop, low chop. We know that if we chop higher, we're gonna leave some of the more undigestible fiber in the field, and that's gonna improve the fiber digestibility of what we put in the bunker. Alfalfa, we know from a harvest standpoint that if we even cut it a little bit higher, again, improving that leaf to stem ratio, that's gonna improve our feed quality. And if we go to a wide swath method to where we're getting that up and out of the field quicker, our relative feed quality is also gonna improve because we're holding on to more leaves, holding on to more sugars in that crop that we're putting up in the silo. So those are some great harvest management opportunities with alfalfa and corn silage. One that's come to light that I think is very worth exploring has been particle length on corn silage and haylage. And one of the tools that's been used and explored has been the Penn State particle separator. Rick Grant at the Miner Institute in Chasey, New York has done a lot of great work to show that even if we have something that is maybe less digestible than what we would want, whether it's our haylage or corn silage, we can impact the digestibility of that forage in regards to how long that particle is. And there's some other nice side benefits too. Rick Grant was able to show that even with high UNDF 240 forages, he was able to change the outcome of milk production with the cows by simply changing the overall particle length of that less digestible forage. And it makes sense. We're creating more surface area for the bacteria to attach to, and we're basically pre-digesting it somewhat for the cow with the shorter particle length. As you can see from the numbers, we had very good fiber digestibility forage in the first two diets, lower fiber digestibility feed in the second two, shorter particle length on diet one and diet three, longer particle length on diet two and diet four. And as the numbers came out, the only one that was a negative in regards to milk production was the longer particle length with less digestible forage. So diet number three with less digestible forage was still able to produce statistically the same amount of milk as diets one and two. So working with growers, we've been doing a lot of shakeout with the Penn State particle separator and getting good samples, letting them know where their overall particle length is, sharing that with their nutritionist as another tool to help them with their fiber digestibility. Going back to the harvest management too with alfalfa, we know that we can change the digestibility, the relative feed quality, just by how many days there are between cuttings. As alfalfa gets more mature, the relative feed quality goes down. Also, when we look at corn silage, one other impact that we can have in regards to fiber digestibility is inoculation. Pioneer's done a lot of research to show that our fiber technology inoculants can actually impact the fiber digestibility of the corn silage, alfalfa, or grass that you're putting up. So we have a lot of tools in our toolbox to impact fiber digestibility. The one thing we can't impact is the growing environment. So how much sun, how much rain, how much heat we get, we don't have a lot of control over, but it's tremendously impactful. But with the tools that we do have, in the way of genetics, fertility, planter performance, monitoring and managing pests, and harvest management across these two major forage crops, we can do a lot to end up with the fiber digestibility that we want on our dairy. And our scientists are constantly researching and selecting the best products for this with our Bovalta BMR brand, with our quality varieties in alfalfa and Harvextra. We're constantly re doing agronomy research to make sure we know the exact fertility needs. And your pioneer agency, your pioneer employees are here to make all of that work to the very best of our ability for you and your dairy operation.
Thanks and have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.